All right, so I, I said I was going to show you guys how I, I made this map, which, by the way, I was actually pretty pleased with. Um, only it turns out it, it was kind of, it ended up being kind of complicated, and I, I don't think it's necessarily the best thing to show as sort of like, you know, people's first FX map example. So instead, what I think I'm going to do is I'm, we're just going to kind of do a free form FX map kind of based on what I was doing with that one and kind of touching on all the same points, but uh, not worrying about it actually looking like that. Uh, we're only going to, we only really need, uh, I'm just going to call it FX map. Uh, we're only really going to need uh, the height information, but I'm going to go ahead and make a PBR because I'm also going to save the um, the base color because it, it's just going to make life simpler uh, putting it out into Unity because it'll already have this map instead of having to do it by hand once we're in Unity. Okay, let's get a um, FX map and let's switch it over to grayscale. Uh, if we right click on here we can actually edit the effects map and it's going to give us um, this one quadrant that's already been set as a root. Uh, if you haven't done these before, uh, I'm assuming people have watched the first uh, FX intro video because I'm not going to go into so much detail about that stuff. Uh, in here uh, we do have a, a a selection of wherever they are. Uh, I can never find them. There they are, pattern. And we're going to actually use an input image. And this this has got exactly the same menu uh, that you've got in the um, shape node. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, just to make this more interesting, because this is something that I did do with my bubbles, because each one of them had their own sort of inherent little animation. So again, we're going to simplify the idea, but let's get something that'll look nice animated. I think this guy looks pretty good spinning around. And we'll get a splatter node. And we will use that splatter node to rotate... Uh, this little guy around before we even put it into the effect map. So let's ramp that up so that allows it, you know, that tells it how much it can vary its variation. I'm going to create an empty function rather than just throwing a timer on it because um, it's kind of big and it's going to want something faster than just time. So let's make a new dynamic function where we can take time and just multiply it by, I don't know, let's say a factor of 10. And yeah, okay, there we go. And we're going to call that time. And we'll set this as our output node and come back in here. So, um, yeah, let's 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 see how this spins before we do anything else with it. So set that up, and let's go ahead and export this out. X map and X map. Okay. So let's make a sure our animation is all squared away and we can just go ahead and drop that on here. Let's see how this works. Yeah, so so it's got this general little spinny thing going. And I think that'll give our FX map a little bit of extra sparkle. Now, so we're going to use this animated donut as our input image. Now remember this, let's take a look at our background. At our, this is our, let's take a look at our actual FX map. There we go. Right now it's showing black. If I put this 
into this top one, it's using it as a background and it's marked background and that's not what we want. We want to use these inputs down here and as soon as I make one it gives me room for another. So you've got no limit, well I haven't tested it but you, you can put a whole bunch of them in there. Um, now we've already right clicked so it, it, it's up here and now that we have an input image in here it's beginning to it's showing up on our input image index so if you have one or more of these you have a drop down list that will allow you to pick and choose which particular input image you want in which particular quadrant so well why, why don't we do that um, because it'll, it'll also help us show, we'll, we'll show a switch too and, and we can use that for a switch. So let's just get another shape node and uh, it'll just give us an opportunity to look at that drop down list. We could, what we're doing here since we're not really manipulating it in any significant way, just want it more or less the same size as that other one. Um, we could have just as easily have done this from inside the um, VFX map, but I'm going to do it this way. So now when I come here, uh, I've actually got that other one in there as well. Right. So uh, let's start making, uh, let's get back to, I, I want to show this. I don't want to see. Uh, let's let's start making our tree. So I can either right click add node quadrant or I can spacebar quadrant. Uh, right. So um, as I mentioned in the previous, it's doing the math of actually splitting up into four in this one. Your your images for the most part, unless you're doing wacky stuff and bringing in images in here nine times out of ten they're going to live on whatever the last row of your tree is and and it's helpful to think of all the stuff that happens between this root which is orange and your last row here these are all sets of instructions that are feeding into the whatever the last row of your Markov chain is. So let's make if I go like this and this, if I do the first and the fourth quadrant and the second and the third quadrant, I end up with a diagonal because we have one, two, three, four. So if I do one and four and two and three, uh, those are diagonals and those correspond to these nodes here. So let's put some images in here. So let's, am I on the right page now? Uh, our pattern, let's do our input image and that's our rotating disks and we can, uh, let's use, well you know what, let's just use the second input image. So we can put this as input image and then change this to input image one. Now, I want to quickly show you a switch. So, this is easier. I think ultimately I'd like to have it all the same thing. I, I think it'll make, I, I wouldn't actually mind having a, like a texture with lots of spinny dots on it. So, uh, I'm going to go for that. But while, we, while we've got this second image up here, I just want to show you how, how this switch works. Um, Let's do this. Now remember, we're going to move these images down. So these are going to be sets of instructions. And I'm going to create a couple more quadrants down here. Now, just for the sake of, of simplicity, I'm going to keep this here, I mean, I can, I can change this up. In other words, just because I had the, the, the uh, pyramids here doesn't mean that I can't switch it around here. This is, because this is completely arbitrary. The, it, these are instructions. This is my result. So all I'm doing is I'm taking 
stuff off of here so it doesn't confuse the issue. And I'm moving it down here. And just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to keep it uh, the same. But that doesn't necessarily mean you have to. And I'm going to stick to input image. Now what this switch does, it, it, it's applying to these two things. So I'm, I'm switching now back and forth between my right hand side and my left hand side. And while this is, it's a Boolean, um, and generally speaking, it, you know, in native to itself, it doesn't actually do a 50-50 split. You can go in here, create an empty function, and kind of force it to. Uh, by, by doing this, you can we're going to get two constants. We're going to set to 1 to 1, and we're going to set 1 to 0.5. And we're going to get a greater, and we're going to get a random. And we're going to go like this, and this is going to force it. To um, kind of split between the two which is exactly what it's doing here. So, um, yeah, I, I don't think I, I, for what I want right now, I'm really not going to use a switch node. I, I just wanted to show that to you guys. Um, so we've got now, uh, these little guys are spinning, because I, I really want to kind of concentrate on, on the functionality that you have. Um, I'm going to get rid of this all together. No, I'm not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bunch, a smaller bunch of bigger ones. Right, we got, yeah, 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 yeah. I think of doing this on the fly. Uh, do I have everything set in here? No, that's wrong. Okay. Except I want this input image here. So we've got some big ones, we've got some small ones, and let's see how those look once we've because there's a bunch of other things I really want to show you that's more important than any specific thing. Um, We're going to, I think, I think this is it. I think we're not going to get any more complicated with our tree uh, because there's, there's other stuff. I think this is enough. Let's get into offsetting these. Now, as we do our X and Y offset, clearly, um, you know, we can, we can do that in a, in a static way. Or we can again we can we can put in a dynamic function that's going to um, animate it as well. You know, before we do this, I, I let's let's look at this iterate node because it's really hard to explain this without it. Uh, the iterate node does exactly what it says it does. Uh, it creates iterations for you. This first one, just like the background uh, in the FX map itself, is going to pass through a single image. So we want to use that second one, and we're also going to right-click and set this as the root. <clears throat> now we can dictate how many iterations. Now notice as I moved it up, because they're all laying on top of each other and they're all semi-transparent, we're starting, see I'm piling them up now on top of each other. So, but if I come back down here, and I do my pattern offset, they're all going to move together. And the reason they're all going to move together is because they haven't been randomized. And we're going to go ahead and do that in here with a dynamic function. Now, to get a pattern offset, 
we're going to need a float too. And, you know, I mean, you, you can have these numbers the same, but we're going to want them different. So we're going to come in here. We're going to create an empty function. And we're going to start randomizing. So we're going to need a constant. And we're going to need a random. So what the random function does it, is it finds a random number between 0 and whatever this number is and it spits it out. But we're going to want two of them. Uh, and we want them to be different. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. But they can both be running off the number 1. So it's going to give us two random numbers between 0 and 1. And then um, we're going to need to turn this into a float 2. Not very elegant. Um, so I get a vector float too. And then I can set this as my output node. And all of a sudden, all these guys, or at least just on that one side, have gotten randomized. And you'll notice that these guys are still sitting up on top of each other. Now, we could, in fact, let's just do that, just so for the sake of symmetry. We could copy, come in here and copy this. We can go back out here and we can come into this one and we can make a new empty function in here. And we can go ahead and paste that in here and we can go ahead and set that as the output node. And we've now got it completely randomized. And then we could, if we were feeling like we'd like to work too much, go and do this stuff to every single one of these parameters, uh, which in fact we can, but there's a lot, there's a way of doing it and being a lot more efficient about it. Because the way this is set out, set up now, you'll notice that it's only really letting you have one of these things up at a time. Um, so in order to sort of start fine tuning this the way we have it set up now, you kind of have to go into pattern offset, then you fix what you need to fix and you kind of come back out here and then you go to the next one and da 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 da, -da and you and you keep going back and actually with the empty function and then you come come in here and you fix what you got to fix and then you come back out here and do all that stuff and it gets very very tiresome. What we can do instead, and also learn something new in the process, is to start to um, just, we can, we can dump all of it up in this first, um, in this first uh, function up in here. And what we're going to do is we are going, because the way, the way substance reads it, it starts, whatever quadrant it's in, it's going to start at the top and it's going to work its way down. And any, um, any functions or variables, you know, that, that's how it reads it. So um, if we put all the instructions in this first one, uh, we can then when we actually dealing with the dynamic functions within any one of these quadrants, we only really have to mess with just the one thing. And this is actually a pretty simple thing to do. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to start doing what we were doing. So I'm going to come up to my color luminosity. I'm going to create an empty function and I'm going to go in there. And I'm just going to drop this guy in there. I'm not really going to do anything with it right now. So the first thing I want to take care of is the instructions for here. So the color and luminosity, we're going to, we're going to leave it at one. So I'm going to get a constant float. I'm going to set it to one. Now the way we're going to work this is it's going to read it from the bottom up and we're going to use something called a sequence node. So it's in con control sequence. So we're telling, okay, do this first. You're going to read this. This is going to go with your, the first thing that you have an option. So this is for this particular ver uh, for a, a parameter rather you're going to use the number one. Then the next thing you're going to do is, oh wait, I shouldn't have done that. The next thing you're going to do is this. However, you're, you're not, it, it's not doing it here. It's, sorry, what am I doing? 
it's going to be looking for, we, we have to tell it where to go and do this thing. And we want it to do it a pattern offset. So I'm going to come out in here. I'm going to clear this. So we've set this little function here that, that's creating this random float to. And we want to put it into pattern offset. What I'm going to do is I'm, you know, here, it's just kind of sitting there. It doesn't have a name. We need to give it a name. And how we're going to do that is we're going to, instead of getting a float to, we're going to set a variable. And we're going to plug this in here. So what we're saying is that the results of this function here is called, uh, it's offset, right? Yeah, offset. And so when, when substance starts looking at this, first it deals with the, the luminosity. Then it's looking for the next time, it's looking for the next thing to do. If, if it doesn't have, if you're not telling it specifically, it's just running through this until it hits the next question mark, which in this case is we've told it to look for a variable. Now we have to put that variable somewhere. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to do an empty function and now I'm going to get a float to, and I'm going to type in the name of that variable. The it's they won't appear. It, it's not going to appear on this dropdown, unlike um, input parameters that you've set for. Um, for publishing it, oh God, I'm losing my brains. Unlike input parameters that you've set out here for um, for your um, uh, bleh, bleh, um, for your procedural that's the word I lost for your procedural materials um, you have to type those in by hand so. You need to set that also as an output node. And why isn't that working? Hold on a second. Here. Oh, because we have to set this as an output node. Okay. And now it's gone and done that. So it's red through it's going it started here there's no changes here no, no. and then it's it's found that variable and it's done what it needed to that variable so we can do this again with our pattern size um, we can go back to this original formula so let's call this add frame yeah, my, my cold isn't getting any better. My brain is really kind of on strike right now. So I'm having trouble with my words a little bit, so I apologize. Okay, so size. We're going to kind of do this. We can copy these two guys. Um, now, do we want our size completely round, or do we want to get it squishy? Because... Again, let's get another vector float to. Um, if I do it like this, then I'm going to have a round shape because I'm taking this number, getting a random number, and then that exact same, whatever that number is, it's going to have the same x and y value. If you want something that's more oblong, then you do exactly here and you get um, a second number. Now I want to take a look at this because right now let's let's get another sequencer and see what happens. Alright, so we're going top bottom to top in our sequence. And then we're going to set this as our output node. And 
oh, you know what we forgot to do? We forgot to set another variable. That's why it's not working. So we need to set another variable, and this time we're going to call it size. Like I said, my brain is not really functioning very well right now. So I might as well put that out here, and then we're going to go... The only reason that changed right now is because it, it's looking at this random um, and the seeds changed, but you'll notice that the size itself hasn't changed until we come back out here and actually set that variable. So again, add a node, variables, get float to, and we have to manually type in size. And come on, right click, set as output map. So now, all of a sudden, we've got a variety of different sizes happening on this one, not on this one, because we haven't touched this one yet. Um, and they're, you know, they're they're all kind of mixing in together as the final result. Now. We could, well, you know what, we'll, we'll keep one step, well, I know, what, what do we want to do with this? We can, we can do the same thing with, well, actually with this one it works, rotation, because you, you do have, even though it's round, you're getting to see some stuff happening, so, um, but there, we've already got them rotating a little bit, so, you know, for now, let's just leave this one alone. Um... Yeah, I think that'll do for now. And then what we can also do is, um, well, maybe instead of doing the same, we'll just do a different formula to this one and we'll rotate the bigger ones. Um, we'll get some size variation, but we'll put a floor on it. I want to do something different. I want to learn something new in this function. So let's go ahead and kind of do the same thing that we did with the other one. So let's start with our brightness, our luminosity. And we'll just give this a number one. And we'll start with our sequence. So we've got this going now. So what's the next thing that we're going to look at on, on this one? Um, am I in the right one? Oh yeah, because we had um, we had that pattern offset in there, so we're going to move that up into here. So again, we can build this one from scratch just for practice. We're going to want a float one with the number one. You can put another number in; it doesn't have to be one. Um, and then a random. Yeah, I don't know which one's easier. Um, what we're doing, and then we're doing the offset. So we want another one of these because we want two different numbers. And then we're going to get a vector float two. And then we're going to set our variable. And we're going to call this offset two. And then the minute we come out in here and do offset two in here, so we come back in here, we do empty function, add node variables, get float two. Offset 2 and set that as our output node. Oops, what did I forget? I actually forgot to do this. Yep, forgot to do that. And there we go. Now, um, let's maybe. Um, oh, you know what? With the size. Let's do, let's do another size. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy 
Let's, let's make them not quite round. So I'm going to copy, actually I can copy this whole thing. I'm going to put it up here. So let's call this offset. Make a frame around it. And here, let's put a floor on, on you know, for, I, I'm not going to do, I, I want it round, but I'm not going to, let's put a floor. I want them to stay big. I don't want them to get small like these other little guys. So yeah, we want them random and we want to generate a number, but we want to put a floor on that number. So we're going to have to create a conditional statement. So if else, so we're going to use one of these. And the way this one works, I, if I want to see what each of these nodes is called, I come up here and display connector name. Right. The first one up top here is a condition. This is your, if, if this condition is met, this happens. If the condition is not met, this happens. So let's think about what we want to have happen here. I want to generate a random number. If that number is smaller, uh, let's do it another way. If that number is greater than, so, so we're talking about a number between zero and one. If that number is greater than 0.5, right, so let's do comparison greater. Did I get that? No. Add node comparison greater. Okay. So we get if this number is greater, if this number is greater than 0.5, then I want my original plan to happen, which is this, and then that number that gets sent out here twice. Okay. Um, and that's my condition in here. If this number is smaller than 0.5, what do I want to see happen? I don't know. Let's figure it out. Um, do I want them to be no smaller than, well, let's see. Okay. Okay. Well, well, you know, the simplest thing to do is just, and see how, how this works. We can, um, again, there, there's no rule here. I'm just trying to figure out formulaically what I want to see happen. Um, then I'm going to take whatever this result is, and I'm going to add 0.5 to it. And that will be what happens. So that should give us a bunch of random sized things, but none of them are going to be smaller than 0.5. That's that ought to, that ought to work. Okay. So the only thing we need to do here now is to actually set a variable and we're going to call that size two. Let's go back in here and empty function, get float two, size two, and set it as our output node, and then come back in here. But you see, I mean, we would be doing all of that going in and out constantly if we didn't have these all set up in, in this one spot. So it, it does actually save a lot of time and you've learned how to set a function. And then we need one more of these uh, sequencers. So again, we're working from bottom to top. And this time we're not going to forget to set it as the output mode. And it's changed our size, but they we don't have any really super small ones up in there. Um, so let's think about what we've done so far. We've got well, let, let's this should be wiggling around quite a bit for us already. 
we haven't actually set any rotations in the um, our offsets are still static so that's I think going to be the last thing I'm going to do is uh, we can put a timer did I s what did I publish this out as okay Oh, yeah, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do this. Which makes all the difference in the world. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. That's pretty neat noise. I'm liking it. It's definitely worth... Um, Looking at some more. Why does my animation animation update rate drop back down to nothing again? Uh, so I'm just going to set that back up again. So are we getting yeah yeah the within them they're all spinning now that's not randomized so that 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 looks kind of even but um the one thing we're going to do before we close out this video is we're going to set all these guys to moving around but it's already looking kind of neat I, I, I like it so let's get back in here now these are the big ones so let's go, we can go ahead and put a frame around this. Kind of size. All right, now, um, size. Now the animation we're going to do in here. So the basic formula is going to stay the same. We still want two random numbers, except instead of using a constant, we're going to go ahead and use some variation on time. Uh, I think by itself, it's pro I mean, I don't know uh, what it is because I haven't actually done this but okay so let, let's just let's just put this in like this and see what happens it's probably going to be too fast but it really is as simple as that because essentially this is just a timer and it's every second it's just spitting out a number and then so it's getting randomized off of whatever number this is spitting out Yeah, so, you know, these guys, are, well, the, we, we only did it on the one, so the, the big ones are moving around now. We haven't put the, the, um, the time on the smaller branch. But, yeah, I mean, it's way too fast because it's not very subtle. So, again, you, you know, you just start manipulating this. Um, if we want to slow down the time, um, oh, we already had it constantly. Uh, we want a multiplication just start multiplying it by a smaller number so let's call it 0.3 and then do that yeah so and another thing you can do is um, we can also, you know, the fact that we're you know, we're making a mask, right? So oh yeah, that that's another thing that's gonna happen. The minute you put time on here, when you're looking at the static thing in here, it, it's right now at this very second, because it's not animated, this is this number right now is zero. So it appears 
<coughs> excuse me, as if they're all layered up on top of each other. If you didn't, and you know, when you publish it out, Um, it's going to look like that now for if for us, but the second you start it, that's going to go away. If you don't, if you don't want that to be like that, if you want it to start from a position of randomization already, like an offset, it's easy enough to fix. I mean, like I said, this is, this is just, this is just a number. Okay. It, it doesn't. It's a number. So by adding something, by adding something to that number, what? I thought I just did that. Uh, by adding any number to that, um, you're going to. Computer's being weird. you're going to immediately create an offset. And it doesn't really matter. Let's try that again. And it doesn't really matter uh, because it that, that number is a constant. So you can just, you can just kind of set a number in there and then this way, and, and it'll always be attached to that time. So it, it, it doesn't really affect anything. But what it means is that when you when you publish this out, uh, it looks it looks messed up from the get go as opposed to being in this state of uh, like grid like state, which you know sometimes it's important. You you know sometimes you you, you don't want it looking all rigid before you know sometimes it's going to start from a particular point in which case you actually want it to look like this. So but that's that's like a super easy fix. Um, no, it's one more thing. Let, let's, um, let's just play a little bit with, with fading this in and out. Um, uh, because this number here corresponds to the, the, you know, the grayscale. So one is white, zero is black. And we can, we can also play with the this is a good way of doing it. We can kind of have the the opacity uh, sort of fade in and out as well, and we can do that like this. Now, you can also use a sine or a cosine wave, and those will go all the way up to one. What I like about the this wave is that you can actually set your amplitude and your frequency. So let's get a couple of numbers in here. and play around with that. Now, I want a shallower wave, so I don't want to go up to one, but it will affect my opacity. So let's say, for example, I set the amplitude of my wave to 0.5. Because I'm actually plugging it in here, that means that my opacity will never go above the 50% the grayscale mark. That's not a problem. Um, Let's just set our frequency first. Okay, so let's make a frequency of, I don't know, 0.3. We can go ahead and kind of cheat this a little bit by remembering that, you know, what you take off, you can put on at the other end. So, and so I subtracted 50% 50, 50 of the amplitude off of my wave because that's the shape I want my wave to be. But I don't want that 50% subtracted from my color. And I can go ahead and I can add I mean, my grayscale value rather. So I can go ahead and I can add that, 50, that 0.5 over here. And that kind of evens it out. So now, fingers crossed, we'll have these. We're only now we're only dealing with those big ones, these these little these little guys are going to stay constant, but the, the stuff in the background should now fade in and out for us as well. And we've been at this for 45 minutes and I think it's probably a long enough video. And we've made kind of this crazy map. 
uh, and let's see what happens. So so it's doing its thing. Hopefully, at some point, it's going to start fading out. If we've done our, yeah, there it goes. Ooh, it's gone. Those little guys. Oh, now it's coming back. <laughs> yeah. So that's um, just a small portion of the kind of stuff you can do with FX maps. So I hope this has been helpful. I mean, we didn't really build anything like quote unquote useful. Uh, but sometimes I find it's helpful to do these things where you're just messing around with it and just seeing what it does. So um, hopefully um, it's been helpful to people in figuring out how to get these things to do what you want them to do.